In today's video, we're going from old and busted to the sweet new hotness of Dakota Digital. And I'll show you how to do that in this video. Stay tuned. So today I'm installing a Dakota Digital um, dash for my car. The things that you will need in order to get this done successfully would be the following. Uh, standard socket set. Um, I use seven millimeter a lot, some 10 millimeter, but to take off the bezels and things like that, it's just real simple. There's not a lot of screws holding this stuff on. After that, you'll need your standard wiring stuff. Wire cutters, some wire strippers, or you can use wire cutters and just trim them off and go from there. Um, if you want to mount the switch, uh, use a paddle bit or drill bit and a drill, and some different color wires to extend your wires, um, like so. The more different colors that you have, the better off you are. If you can match up the colors from your gauge cluster, the better off. Um, I use these heat shrinkable with solder connectors. These are awesome. All you use is a heat gun and make sure the solder melts and it's good. I love these things. Um, last thing you'll need is just uh, use this instructions. Um, the only thing I really used out of here so far is how to set the unit up which it goes through what every setting means and everything. And this wiring diagram right here was priceless off this unit. So I use this and then right here, I'm gonna insert a picture of the other wiring diagram from the pinout behind the dash. You'll see all the things you'll need in there and that thing was use, very useful and that, that'll be your, your guide. And I just kind of made a quick cheat sheet on paper just to make sure that um, I put everything together. And that's really all you need in order to be successful with this install. And for putting the sensors in, um, underneath, they, they were really simple. Um, I used a rubber grommet and ran the wires, they're real thick. Uh, I was actually really happy with this install. Okay, let's get started on this install. I wanted to go ahead and open this in front of you guys and see what we got here. This is what she looks like. Notice speedometer and fuel level must be calibrated. See full manual for directions. Okay. I'm going to leave this little plastic coating on here. Last thing I need to do is scratch this. Seems like a pretty solid unit. Looks like there's a little cable plug in the back. That's what this is for. Right. It's like a temperature oil sending unit. Here's all the wiring. It's nicely labeled here. So And, of course, the almighty instructions, so we know what we're doing. Packed by NW. I don't know who NW is, but thank you NW. You did a great job packing this. Ooh, what is this? Cool. 
little switch here for something. Hmm. Guess we'll have to look at the instructions to see what this is. Uh, this is for, but yeah. Here's the data cable that goes from this sheet. Oh, there's three of them. Yeah. I guess this is for different uh, modules. I do know that um, di uh, Dakota Digital has a lot of options to upgrade and stuff, so if I did want to go to an LS or something, I could still use the same cluster and upgrade it. All right. Uh, here's the unboxing of this uh, beautiful display. Um, let's go ahead and start working on the car and putting this all in. The reason why I'm replacing my gauge cluster is because like nothing works on it. Um, while I'm driving around, my, my speedometer cable will kind of kick in and kind of kick out. So that's broken. Uh, even with the new transmission, um, there's something wrong with the gauges. Uh, oil pressure gauge does not work, it just sits there. Fuel gauge doesn't work, which is like the key driver to why I'm getting this fixed, because I know I have oil pressure, but it'd be nice to know at all times what my oil pressure is. But not knowing what my fuel is, I still have to like go get gas like every time I leave the house in this car. I have no idea what, how much gas is in here, which is very nerve wracking. For those that don't have any gas gauges, you guys know what I'm talking about. The temp sensor does work, and the voltage always works. Uh, and anybody that's ever had a third gen, you know this breaks all the time. I was gonna take this out and weld it, and uh, not weld it, solder it and fix it as one of my projects, but with as many problems I have with this gauge cluster, why not just take it out and replace it? That was my, my thinking behind it. It just seems like a waste of time, waste of money to just take that out solder it. Anyway, you can kind of see what my mileage is on this car, 173,000, 449. So, let's go ahead and take this bad boy out and start replacing it, put all the sensors in, and start playing with any toy. I think I'll take out the steering wheel, don't want to get it messed up. Um, yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's take out the steering wheel first. All right. Steering wheel is removed. If you want to see a video on that, I do have one where I'm putting in the steering wheel until it shows you how to take it off. All right, so just have to take this off. Now the fun part, we got to see what does what here. And here, take those wires out, hook them up to that module, and then we install sensors. Well, I'm not really ready to do wiring yet, so I'm going to take off this dust shield and put it on to the new gauge cluster. So that is one of the requirements. Let's go ahead and get that done.
this part's done. Now it's all about wiring and the sensors. Let's get it done. Next is a low pressure sensor. That's this bad boy right here. Which is a lot smaller than the one I have in there right now, which is really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and push you that from your eight. And uh, go from there. Now that I have the speed sensor, I have an electronic one, so I don't put in a manual one. Um, I'll just use the sensor wire from the back of the cluster and then plug that in straight to the unit. That should work. Um, I do have the, the temp sensor installed and I have the, the oil pressure sensor installed. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the wires from the engine bay into the center console area where I'll feed it to there. Which I don't know where I'm gonna mount that little cluster at, but to uh, figure out a spot. Anyway, I'll start working on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go underneath. This is the, this is the three prong, so that's the oil pressure. I'm gonna send that up through this little cluster right here and go from there. Oh, the joys of wiring. <laughs> Got the wires ran up through this little hole. It has a grommet on it. You can kind of see underneath here. This is my oil pressure sensor. And then my other one it is right here. Here. So I'm going to kind of zip these together. And secure them. And we're good. We're deep pinning our things here, uh, our clips. And I want to kind of show you what I'm working off of. So I found this C1 and C2. C2 is on the left slash driver side and C1 is on the right side and I'll be using this as my template. Um, so what I'm depending are the speed input, the ground, I don't need the oil pressure, I need the fuel gauge, uh, the right indicator, left indicator, I need those, the high beam indicator, and illumination, and then gauge of power. I'll be depending all of those. And then on C1, I will be doing, let's see, tack it, tack. I'll get that one done, done. And a break. It's really all I'm doing on that side. So, anyway, kind of have an idea what we're looking at. Um, on these clips, they're kind of cool. These things pop open, 
right here that hold them in on both sides. So you just kind of pop them out and they'll clip back in when, you, when you're done. Um, but they pop right out. And then I'm using a screwdriver to go underneath here to push it up and then they come right out. So that's how these get depinned. I haven't done this side yet, but uh, kind of see, see how they just pop open just like that. Okay, on both sides. See? Okay, I'm gonna be doing that right now. So what I have so far hooked up, just going to show you guys. Got the fuel sending units with a yellow wire. We got the oil sending units. We got the water temperature. We also got left and right turn signals hooked up. Now we're doing the speed sensor out. Or, yeah. And that's the brown wire here. Let me kind of see what they all look like. You'll see two wires for each one of these uh, for the turn signals, light and blue. And I kind of kept the colors the same when I extended the wires. Um, this is our fuel sending unit. And this is going to be, this is brown. This is going to be our speed sensor. So we'll update that. And the rest of these are as follows. The green is going to be the high beam. So, high beam. So, we'll get that one done too. These blacks are grounds. This pink is power. These three black are grounds. So we can put these up to the side. Okay. And I don't think I'm going to be using this tam. No. Not using tam. But the gray we are using, which is our illumination. Which, I don't know. I may have to use that or not. But, kind of have an idea. Alright, back to it. So I have all the wires hooked up, just kind of see what we're doing here. Uh, this gray wire right here is illumination. I tacked on the blue, brown wire, speed sensor. This green wire is our high beams. Purple is our fuel sending unit. These two blues are left and right turn signals. This is power, grounds, and something I'm not going to use. Okay, this side we have our, our tack, the white, which I followed with white again. And this is our tan wire, which is our brake. It tells when the brake's engaged or we have a brake problem. Our plan is to test this unit. We're going to test this before we install it. So that's why you have all these wires kind of hanging out here. 
after I'm done with testing it, make sure everything's working, I'm gonna run all these wires behind here and behind here. And I think in, I can find a spot underneath here to mount the unit or I'm gonna do it behind here. I haven't really decided yet, but I left myself long wires. So I have a choice to hook it at a different, couple, couple different spots. Now I need a key power and a ground and a constant. So I'll get the for those right now. Again, all this wiring is temporary until we um, make sure everything's working. And then we're gonna move all this up. But uh, I got power and ground to this unit. All these wires running to it. Okay, here's the gauge cluster. Just so you know, there's like a Cat5 cable that goes on the back of this. It's like three and a half feet long or something like that. And this goes straight into there at the very top. like so. This is a switch that came with the kit. Pretty simple little hookup. You hook it up in the switch area, right here. And then we hook up the negative here. So, I'll hook that up right now. Switch is installed. I have a cluster web of wire here. And again, this is do configuration stuff in here. All right, let's give it power and see what happens. Started reading was about a little under 11. We were at another one. Um, I got the time to set. Let's go. I'm gonna have to read some instructions now. Find out how to do the rest. All right. We'll be back. Let's test a few things like the blinkers and the ivy and all that stuff. So. Oh. Okay, that works. Okay, that works. Right. Um, lights. Okay, that's good. High beams, high beam light came on. Cool. Okay, that works. Now I need to figure out how to set everything up. So in order to get this thing into test mode or um, configuration mode, you do have to hold down the one button while you're turning the car in accessory mode. So let me try to see if I can do that. So hold the button down. Okay, now it's in setup mode. Now, what you'll do is you'll kind of use the one button to kind of toggle through, speed setup, tack, bolt, water, oil, fuel, lighting, displays. Anyway, 
So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set the tack. What you'll do is you'll hit and hold the one button while it's on tack. And then you'll select your engine by holding the button again. So it's like every time you select something, you're going to hold the one button to kind of go into that area. So if I want to adjust that, I can get that nine cylinder engine that I've been looking for. But this is an eight cylinder, so I'll get it there. And then when I'm done, I'll just hold the button to get out of there. So it's a V8. Um, update, no. Well, I can warn myself. So it's 6,000 RPM. This thing's gonna yell at me, tell me to calm down. Okay. Uh, signal strength, so this is the voltage. So I have it on five low, which I believe that's what these systems require. Um, so I'll find out when I'm driving down the road if this thing works or not. Or I can do 12 high. Anyway, it's just a quick, simple spin and switch. But that's the tack setup. In order to get out of this, I'll just go to done. Oops. And then hold the button, get out of tack. And then what we'll do is we'll go down to fuel. And I need to set up my fuel. Fuel sender. Uh, it's not custom. You can test it to see how much fuel you have in there and what ohms you have. But uh, I know that this is a 90. It's a GM 90. Um, there's a GM 30 in here and a bunch of stuff for Ford and stuff, but the GM 90 is what you need for this model. Okay, I'm done with that. And I'll hit done. Well, I can adjust the lighting, displays, info. I can set the odometer. So this thing has 174,000 miles um, before I took the other one out. So I went ahead and did that. Oh. Wish you could just hold it once and get out of this, but each click. And then save. Um, yes. All right. And then you can set up the speed. Um, it recommends to go into auto. So I have mine set to auto right now. So. But this is basically what it'll yell at you about when you're setting it up. But basically, um, I got a fuel gauge again. Wanna go fill this thing up? It should be cool. And I have a bunch of cool stuff here. Zero to 60, quarter mile speed, RPMs, high RPM, and the time. Pretty cool little setup. I'm actually really happy with this thing. So next steps are you gotta kinda put this all together together. Um, hide all the wires, run everything, and put my fuse panel back up, put my steering wheel back in. I still have a lot of work to do uh, before I can take this on and get out the road. So I'm gonna start doing that now.
Okay, so I've ran into my first issue with my Dakota Digital Dash. I was trying to mount it in there, you can't kind of see that in the video. I'm trying to mount it in there and I'm having trouble with the bezel that goes around it to seat over it. I was like, well, this should just fit in there. I don't need to trim anything. I did buy it that way. So I started looking at the mounting points. The mounting points in the original stock one flush here is about an inch and a quarter. This is three quarters inch. So it's about a half inch difference between these two and this two. Well, it's not allowing it to go further into the pocket. Same thing goes for here. This one and this one. You can see how this one is uh, lower than that one. Same thing with this one. This one's further out than this one right here. Reached out to Dakota Digital. Uh, they asked me to send some pictures just to make sure we got the right one, which it does say I got the right one. 992. But they're super nice. They sent some extra pictures and said, hey, we're gonna get these engineers and get right back to you. I don't expect to hear back from them today, only because I did talk to them at like five o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday. I did also break my water temp sensor and they're actually gonna send me a new one at no extra cost. And that was a separate phone call. They didn't even know that I was having issues with this part which is really cool of them, really nice of them to send it out without any cost. They said, hey, the first one's on us, next one's on you. Super nice text to work with Dakota Digital. I really recommend them. I just hope they can figure this out because I don't want to mount crate mounting brackets for this um, because I did spend all kinds of money for it, you know? It should just work. Well, I'll keep you updated. Uh, on what happens and we'll go from there. All right, let's recap on where we're at. We've already ran all the wires. We've plugged everything into the harness. We have hooked everything up to my fuse panel. Next things we need to do is route the wires, which I've done. I've routed the wires all behind here so nothing's protruding out. This is the only thing that connects to the actual gauge cluster. And you'll see how this is routed in here. It comes through here and out here. Obviously, we're going to trim down the wires, but we are going to be shoving the panel back behind here. What we're going to do is we're going to have the wires probably long enough to about right here. Hook everything up to the panel cut all this excess wire off and then we're going to velcro it using these cool little velcro strips to the back of the panel so I can easily take it in and out. What we do need to mount is a switch. The switch that came with the system that allows you to program our Dakota Digital Dash. And I have the perfect spot for it. So let me show you what I've done so far. So with our kit, we it came with this switch right here. This is what I was showing you that programs the actual Dakota Digital Dash. Um, I thought maybe we could just not hook it up and just hook it up whenever we needed it. But if I lose power or if I need to change the time due to daylight savings or if I want to put in track mode or whatever I want to do, it requires this little toggle switch thingy. So I was looking at my dash, just thinking about where I was gonna put it, but um, the third gen Camaro came with uh, this empty faceplate on the actual bezel that goes around my dash. So I was thinking, well, huh, we'll just use this. Obviously it didn't come with a hole in it, but I put this hole in there using a uh, drill bit. I marked the middle and the back with a small drill bit and I drilled a hole in it uh, this way and I wasn't sure if this was going to work so I didn't really video it but um, I put that hole in there first and then uh, coming from the face I uh, I didn't want to smart up or scratch it I used a 3 4 paddle bit and it worked perfect um, the one thing you have to do is you have to notch um, 
know if you can see that, but on the top here is a little notch here so it doesn't spin. So you have to notch this too. So I used a file uh, just to notch that. And I'm not sure if it's gonna fit. Um, so let's go ahead and see how it worked. Okay. So I'll put it in here like this. Oh yeah, I put the notch upwards because I want the one to be on the left and the two to be on the right. So you gotta make sure you do it that way, otherwise uh, you may have the switch upside down and it'd be a little embarrassing. Or no one would notice, who knows. Uh, it's a tight fit. Ooh, wow. That's a perfect fit. Okay. Actually looks really good. I'm really happy with that. Ooh, it looks like it, it looks like it belongs here. I mean look at the color, the black and everything matches up really well. I'm really happy with this. Alright. Um so you guys have reference to where this will be at. Um, let's show you on the dash. Uh, this is the bezel. Um, it needs to be cleaned up, but uh, that was one of my things I would do next. But you can kind of see where this is at right here. It uh, goes right there. And see on this side right here it has one, two, but it already is using this defrost switch. But let's route this through and see what it looks like. status looks like it belongs there that's the point right whenever I'm gonna do this I'm gonna go ahead and just hit the switch on here and my biggest worry is it's not even really a worry I can always extend the wires but is, are these wires long enough to reach there and that's what we're gonna find out here in a few minutes but yeah that looks really good I'm really really happy with this all right Go uh, back in the car. All right, let's see what this dash looks like. We'll just kind of mock it up. Looks like I might have enough wire. Hopefully. I think I'm like three to four inches too short. What we're doing is we're putting this unit like this right here. Yeah, I'm gonna extend the wires too short for comfort. So what you're seeing now is we ran all the wires to where it needs to go. We ran the water sensor and 
the oil pressure sensor wires all the way through here. They come in through a grommet right in here. That's what these two wires are here. They go up past here, right into here. And these are the power and ground from the other side. Fuse panel. This is from our switch. This is everything else. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna Velcro the back of the plate in the back. And we're gonna start hooking everything up. All right, this is looking amazing. This is exactly what I had envisioned in my head. Something really tight knit, clean, and to size. So, one thing I have to do now is just wedge it in the corner back there and Velcro it there. So, I already have the Velcro stuck on the back here. And the last thing I have to do is just Plug this in and get this shoved up in the corner. Okay. Now that that is shoved in the corner and it's hidden out of the way and away from my feet, let's test it to make sure it works. You may notice that we did not put the bezel back on. Um, I'll get into that later, but uh, for time being right now, we are going to go ahead and turn this sucker on and see if it works. I got power hooked up. Let's see what happens. Okay, everything's working. So the wiring job is perfect. 
I got fuel, I have voltage, I got time. Um, the only thing I have to do to test right now is make sure that when I turn it off, it saves the time. And then when I turn it back on, you know, Okay, time save, fuel came back. You gotta calibrate the speed, obviously. Well, this is <laughs> this is amazing. I can't actually drive the car on this video. We're gonna be doing a follow-up. We're gonna do a follow-up video on the actual driving and setting up the speed and uh, configuring everything. Uh, the reason why is because I'm still waiting for some parts. Thank you again for everyone that has subscribed and that uh, continually watch my videos. I really do appreciate it. If you have any questions about this install, any questions about the wiring that I did, how to tuck the wires, anything like that, let me know. Post it in the description. If you've had any issues yourself from uh, for this video, let me know. Otherwise, uh, thanks again for staying tuned. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Like right now, just go click the button right, right there. Uh, until next time, thank you very much. Oh, and there's tons more coming towards this channel about this car, and I have to do some painting and stuff on the BMW and fixing the, the, the Acura. Let me know what you want to see. If you want to just see Camaro stuff, let me know. I have some suspension upgrades I need to do. So much more, so much more. Anyway, thanks again. Until next time, bye.